Kyle Arrington. Hey everybody, I'm Rashonda Arrington. I go by V. Uh, so we met in high school. We didn't date though. Everybody I always asks us that when we say that. Um, we had the same group of mutual friends that we uh, kind of reconnected a few years after college. Um, so what attracted me to this uh, beautiful young lady right here was her, um, her beauty on the inside and out, her principles, her foundation, her values. And I'd be remiss if I did not mention a certain dress. I was about that, to say, come on and keep it real. You know it was girl, the dress. You know what she was doing when you, when you took that out of the closet. I'm just saying. No. So, like you said, we went to the same high school. We were not high school sweethearts. It's not that story, right? But it was us getting together, in a sense, after college. We would have game nights, that sort of thing. And he did only see me in a dress at first. And that's when I guess I caught his eye. But... Um, in a sense, I was focused on me, so I wasn't in a, entertaining dating or anything at that time, and it wasn't until he actually pulled me aside in front of our friends and was like, can we have a conversation? And based off of that conversation, it was honestly just certain things that I prayed for were being answered in the midst of that conversation. So that's really what attracted me to him, was the conversation. So basically, sometimes you don't know what you want till you want. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it wasn't any pressure for me. Um... I was what? We had graduated from college in 2008. We started dating in 2010. So it wasn't a lot of pressure for me because, and it's, like I said, I was focused on me. I was working. Um, he was out of town a lot for work, right, with football. So he wasn't in town as much. And for me, it was just the, like I said, the conversation that we had. Um, it was like I realized, okay, he's not just an athlete. Like he's actually pretty intelligent. So maybe I judged a book by his cover. But um, I really liked our conversation. So that's when it was certain things. I was like, okay, I can kind of connect with him on that level. So, my turn? Yeah. Uh, when did I know she was the one? Um, so, you know, when you know, you just know, right? It's almost like the uh, the first time going to Chick-fil-A. You know, that, that, that experience, you know. Uh, <laughs> it, it, you, you, don't, you know, you realize what you've been missing this whole time. And it's not, you know, just because of the goods. <laughs> what? It's... Um, Culture, you know, maybe it's, I'm thinking it's the culture that you want to be a part of, and it's ultimately the culture you want to create together. Kyle Arrington, DMV native, uh, Wimpark Park High School, Prince George's County, uh, went to Hofstra University, Long Island. Um, you know, had nine years in the NFL, went to two Super Bowls, won one. Um, you know, majority with the New England Patriots in my career, and I like, love them or hate them, right? Uh, somebody right here loves them, though. Um, <laughs> so that is uh, that is me in a nutshell. So me and my lovely wife, I'll allow her to introduce herself, but we have started a um, non-profit because all about, you know, being able to transcend what we have, were able to do on the football field and to offer it to our community. So I was born in South Carolina, raised in Brandywine, definitely a DMV native. I went to college at North Carolina a t Aggie Pride. I know it's a lot of y'all out there um, in this area. But really, I contracted in the government, eventually stopped and moved up to Boston with Kyle once we were pregnant. Um, after being married a little while, we got pregnant and decided to just raise our family up there. And I came back home once um, he decided to, in a sense, we moved to the Ravens. And then once he retired, we had two other kids. So we have three kids total. And now I am an event planner, a wellness coach, and a philanthropist and an executive director of our nonprofit. You go there. Uh, so I definitely felt safe. I feel safe every day, right? Like I feel as though with your partner, you have to have that safety net. You have to feel safe every day. Um, there were times where I lost loved ones, times that even in my business endeavors that I, you know, kind of get, you feel down or you don't know what's going, what the next step is. So I would say that it's not a day that goes past that I don't feel safe with Kyle. I know that he's definitely... Um, our provider, the protector in our household, um, you know, after God for us. But uh, really, every single day, I, I think that if I couldn't feel safe with him, then it, the relationship wouldn't work. So, um, good job. No, uh, so I think safe, you know, means can mean different things to different people. For me, it means uh, part of it means peace of mind. And so I know from the moment I laid, I, I laid eyes on her, I want to be with her for the rest of my life. So um, give me a piece of mind in that sense. But, uh, but maybe a particular story. So first meeting her parents, it was a gathering that they had at their house. 
And um, so they have a close family friend. <laughs> uh, you know, I know where he's okay. going. <laughs> no, so they have a, bear with me, indulge me. Um, I have a close family friend, and uh, he, uh, that person, he or she, has a son that uh, yours truly here has a little history with. And so, like I said, first time meeting the parents and, and everything. And so um, she was very polite, but very direct, said pretty much they got to go. And so um, it was right then and there that I knew that myself and my feelings would always come first. So, you know, I got your back. And you feel very, very safe. As a kid, well, in my experience, uh, I take to get a similar experience, um, but in, in mine particularly, I, you know, I saw love, dedication, commitment, sacrifice, you know, to, uh, to your family and also to each other. So I knew, you know, as a, as a child, that's what I wanted, you know, as, um, you know, uh, for myself, that type of love, that type of commitment, you know, just that, that type of, uh, you know, culture is a you know, word I, um, I, mean, I, I think we can't emphasize it enough as well. And that I would be grateful, fortunate, and um, proud, you know, call something like that a moment. I think for me, uh, what I saw love as as a child definitely plays a part into the way I want to be loved as an adult, um, the way I do love. I know that my father, definitely a provider. Um, he's a go-getter. He's a hard worker. And my mom has always been one who takes care of home. She, you know, they've had their different times where one was the breadwinner and the other was a breadwinner. But I think that um, my dad showed love in the sense of, I had, I, I protect, you know, I'm a protector, I'm a provider, I'm going to do what I have to go do to make sure that my house is taken care of. And my mom is one who I think probably wanted to be loved, but I don't think that it's, back then it was known like what the love language, what your love language is. And so as an adult, um, you know, I saw, of course I saw the relationship, I saw the love that was shown, they showed it different ways. And I think that that allowed me to understand that as I got older, I know how I want to be loved, and I know that what love looks like to me may be different from my spouse. I know for Kyle, love is totally different. You know, his love language is somewhat different than mine. He is more of an affirmation, um, touch type person. I, if I'm being very honest, Girl, hey, no, don't stop now. if I'm being very honest, um, like the, the affirmations are okay, but for me, it's more so show me. Like, the words are okay, but show me. And acts of, you know, acts are really big in my book, as well as I do my gifts. So, you know, that doesn't hurt, right? But, um, you know, I think that growing up, um, very grateful to grow up in a two-parent household, um, knowing that that's what I wanted for my kids as well. I know that my mom didn't necessarily grow up that way. My dad did. So them both coming from different backgrounds and seeing how I was raised, how I wanted to raise our kids, what what my house I wanted to, it to look like. And just, I think that it's important to know that. So for me, um, knowing what I know about love and what had to change in me, I had to first understand who I was. So like I said before, Kyle and I started dating, I was actually dating myself. You know, I would go to dinner by myself. I would go to the movies by myself. And I'm okay with sitting at a table, eating, and everybody else around the table can have, around the restaurant can have somebody at the table with them. But I was really in a session where I was learning myself. I was on my spiritual, my spiritual journey, as well as just my personal growth journey. So I think that in knowing how I was raised, um, things I wanted, I didn't want my husband to be away for a long period of time. Like I said, my dad would be in and out, um, because he would have to travel for work. He does construction work. So um, he's a contractor. So I didn't want a house in a sense. I love that fact that he was a provider. But I didn't want my husband to be away for so many times. So much length of time. So I think that that for me had to change. I had to know that who I was dating. Although he did have a football career. It was where I was leaving work on a Friday. Going, going up to Boston. Coming back to work on a Monday. Flying back in. So we didn't have that strain of long distance in a sense. So... Uh, for me, um, very, very similar, honestly. So, um, uh, as a, you know, you, as a kid, you know, you, you experience and you see things in, uh, in your parents that, uh, you know, that, that, you know, will want for yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, my mother, you know, she was, a you know, hard worker, uh, independent, um, she was like, you know, she was like Superwoman, you know, Wonder Woman, if you, you know, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, she likes Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah, and she does like Wonder Woman too, by the way. And so I know for, and I, I know for myself as, as, as a, as a man, 
and I was looking for those similar qualities and traits as, uh, you know, in my wife, not, you know, knowing that, you know, my wife, she'll, you know, won't be my mother. <laughs> Obviously, <Yeah. laughs> you know, never, you know, um, so, and I think another part of it for me is um, just thinking of how, you know, how fortunate we were to, to grow up in the, uh, in the household we have from Great Parents, Great Foundation, and, you know, just try to replicate that same thing. I don't, I don't just replicate, but raise the bar, um, you know, like our parents, um, you, you know, you feel like it's safe to say for most parents, not all parents, that they want to create an environment for their children where they could be the best version of themselves. Um, I felt like that's what you know, my, my par- our parents did for us. That's you know, what we want to do for, for our kids. And um, them, but I'm also, like I said, continue to raise the bar, be better than us. Mm-hmm. That's how you um, you keep it going. You know, even when when you're you know when you're not when you're not here. I'm, uh, I think I'm still one of you, one of your lines. You just uh, said to me the other day. Um, you know, that's that's legacy. That's success for us. There is no success without a successor. So how do we celebrate love? So obviously, um, Valentine's Day is coming up, right? Uh, you know, for, you know, Valentine's Day anniversaries, birthdays, um, I know all those big moments, albeit arbitrary. You no, know, no, still. Uh, for I, I think for us, it's it's the micro moments. You know, it's the uh, the little things. You know, picking up flowers or rubbing her feet while you know we're watching a movie. You know, expressing how much we love each other without being told to. So I think celebrating love really is an everyday thing. It's the, sometimes it looks like putting a date night on the schedule, right? Because we do have three kids, we have other businesses. Um, I mean, for our anniversaries, our birthdays, we're definitely in the moment making sure that the other one feels loved. I remember one year he had me go, it was actually, what, the pandemic had just started? And so we were in the house, nobody couldn't go anywhere, and he had me go on a scavenger hunt to find different things throughout the house, right? So I think it's things of that nature. I think it's finding that show on Netflix or that series on Netflix that you both enjoy, that you kind of get to, you know, lay up on the couch and watch TV together. Um, It's the anniversary dinners, it's the birthday dinners, the birthday parties, things of that nature. But like I said, it's really the everyday love, like, Oh, he loaded up the dishwasher. I appreciate that. Like, I'm so grateful for that, right? The um, picking up the flowers. For me, it's, you know, even if it's like doing his laundry, because I don't, I don't like to do laundry. Like, I do not like to do laundry. So if I toss your clothes in the load, like, you should definitely be grateful, right? So it's just right. different um, ways to show love in that sense for us. It really is the everyday, like, okay, just go up in his office. And I might do like a little funny real dance, right? Um, a trending dance or just I see him walking past and just give him a hug just to you know one let him know that I see him I see all the different things that he's going you know doing in his business ventures and he's appreciated so and loved so I think that's really what it is for me uh man it's uh we got three of them so it's pretty much playing zone defense at this point you know we're (laughs) outnumbered I tell you no um it has been a uh been the best ride of our lives you know it's been it's been a no Every day is a new journey. You know, you have we have three, you know, beautiful, healthy kids. So we need to, uh, first and foremost, you know, our, you know, family is happy and healthy. You know, we, we have nothing to complain about. Um, and the, if us, the icing on the cake, everybody just has, you know, different personalities. You know, our, uh, our oldest, he's you know, very creative. Uh, our class clown. Class clown, <laughs> he's creative. A, he's a comedian. Yeah, he's a comedian. Um, I wonder where he gets that from. Uh, our middle middle child, you know, Katie, he just he just um, like call him our sweet and sour kid. I mean, he can, you know, love you, be affectionate, uh, very thoughtful. Then all of a sudden, you know, like, like who, who is this kid? You know, he just just being mean, mean as he wants sometimes. Um, no, nah, and then they'll say he's just also too cool, you know, for school as well, that that kind of thing. And he's a flirt, so yeah, yeah like, y'all better watch out for that one. Um, and then you know, boss baby, you know, the theory of she uh she runs a house. Honestly, um, I, I think uh, between between you and her, y'all are jockeying for power. Yeah, <laughs> very much so. Uh, no, so uh, so like like I mean to answer your question, and just in terms of raising kids, um, you know, it takes it takes a village, and so we're we're very you know um, blessed to have uh, grown up in a in a terrific village ourselves, and the same thing um, that we want to provide for uh, for for our children. You know, whether it's us, whether it's um, grandparents, uh, you know, neighbors, I mean, even teachers. Coaches will be very integral, you know, uh, in, in their lives growing up. So, so yeah, nah, it's, it's about the village. Ooh, raising kids, let me tell you. No, <laughs> but, you know, it's definitely one of those things that it takes a lot from you. It takes a lot of you, 
but it's one of the best feelings. Like I would it, I would do it over and over and over again. Of course, there's times where I'm tired, right? Um, you know, you're running one to school. Well, now all three of them are in school. So two go to one school. The other one goes to early childhood daycare. And like Kyle said, the oldest one, everyone is different. They have their own personalities. Um, I don't know. I feel like KJ is definitely that quiet storm kind of like he's, he would probably have been okay if he was the only child, but he's great having other siblings. Caden is, he's probably the mama's boy. He is always up under me. Um, and Callie is, I don't really care who I'm up under if it serves me kind of thing, right? So um, it's funny because just recently our oldest, he, well, the older two boys, they go to tutoring. And um, the oldest one, we have him going a few extra days. And so the teacher said, well, do you know his love language? And I wasn't even thinking. Like, I was like, no. And she was like, I think he's motivated by gifts. And so it actually caused, uh, yeah, sounds, it sounds, sounds kind of familiar, eerily, right? Eerily. <laughs> so, but it's um, funny because in taking that on, I actually looked at the other two and I'm like trying to, you know, I had to learn their love language. So KJ is definitely gifts. Caden is definitely touch and affirmations. Callie is acts of service. Like she will help you clean up. She wants to clean up. She wants you to do things for her. So I think in understanding that and taking that on now, I think it's going to be very, um, it's going to be very good for like understanding how they are growing up and how to love them according to the way that they need to be loved, not just the way that you think that they should be loved. So, um, I mean, it's eventful. It's something that, like I said, I would do it over and over again. So I'm just, we're blessed. They're healthy. Um, and we couldn't, I mean, they, they're a handful though. They are a handful. So, but it's, it's, it's really good. It's fun. They were just yesterday, he was teaching um, Callie how to do the little Moana um, dance. They were singing, um, what did we, we don't say Bruno? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, Encanto. And yeah, Encanto. Oh, so it's always they a Disney night at our house. Now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. But no, it's, it's really good. It's a blessing, so. By, we, by the way, we don't talk about Bruno. Yeah, we don't talk about Bruno. That's it. That's it. So how do we manage miscommunication, any type of issues, right? I think it's really understanding who you're married to, who you're in a relationship with. So understanding how they communicate. I'm more so, and I know this about myself at this point, like I'm more so like, let's get it solved like right now kind of thing, right? And because I'm, I'm not one who holds grudges. Um, I'd rather fix the problem, fix the issue, because if not, I feel like it affects her. So that's not really me. Kyle, on the other hand, is more so like a, let me take this back. Like, he's going to think about it. He might try to send a text message. That's not necessarily me. Like, but that's his way of getting his feelings oh, out. Yeah, thoughtful text message and how he feels. But that's his way of getting his feelings out. At first, I did not care for that. Like, mind you, Marsha be 10 years married, right? So, we started dating in 2010. It took some getting used to. But that's part of growing. That's part of understanding who you're with. That's part of loving one another. And so now at this point, it's just like, okay, we'll get it. Because we'll, we definitely, it ain't peach cream, right? Like, you go through different things. You have different feelings. But, um, I mean, it's, 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 it's a lot of people. It's, it's, it is pretty good. But at the same time, I understand at this point, like, okay, he's going to need his moment. And it's okay for him to have his moment because I have to be respectful of him and how he processes things. And that's part of loving that person unconditionally. Like, loving them in spite of how you may want them to react, understanding that everybody's not going to react that way. And I think it's also, like I said, it's just the, that's the part of communication that you really have to understand how your spouse is. So how do we manage arguments and disagreements? Mm, I guess very similar to what uh, the Mrs. <laughs> said. Uh, she will say that I am, I don't know if Zodiac has anything to do with this. She will oh, say I'm such a Leo. He is. And so, yeah. um, you know, I think we all, you know, have our moments, you know, and so uh, um, I, for myself, just never want to say something that I can't get back. And so that's part of the, I think that's the biggest component mm -hmm. to why, you know, uh, she, you know, she will want to get everything handled, situated, you know, uh, rectified then and there. Yeah. Uh, but, my, but myself, like I said, especially just, you know, depending how, how, 
what the situation depending is. Depending on the situation, circumstance of the, you know, of the argument, right? And uh, like I said, I just don't want to ever, you know, put something out there that I, like I said, I can't get back. And so yeah. I will, I will pause, take a moment and um, like, like she said, you know, alluded to, uh, shoot, shoot a text message. That, you know, being the way I can make sure that I say everything I want to say um, in a way that it will land, you know, um, for, for both of us, honestly. And then, you know, we, we come back and then we can, um, you know, we can talk about it and then, um, yeah, just, you know, try to, you know, move on, move on from there. Yeah. Hmm. So what advice will we give other couples? Uh, mm. I, I think well, uh, first thing that comes to mind, at least for me, is, you know, no, one size does not fit all. Um, you know, everybody's love is different. Everybody expresses love different. And uh, for a better lack of a, a, an analogy, I always fall back to sports references. And so uh, your team and, you know, we have uh, fighting for the same common goal and that's to love, support and just uplift each other, no matter the down and distance. I think for me, what advice would I give? I'm not a huge like give advice type person, right? But a suggestion in a sense, um, I would probably say be your own couple goals. Um, I think that we live in a time where everybody sees a picture and they're like couple goals, couple goals, couple goals. And I think that you have to be really mindful of the things that you speak and even the things that you write down, right? Um, for example, I always give this reference. So I absolutely love Barack and Michelle, right? I think that they're a great couple together. However, um, I know that she mentioned one time that I guess he used to smoke when they first started dating and he had to stop. I'm like, I'm not a smoker. So no matter how much I love, you know, like he was a very nice looking man. I want to be like, that's my, he's a, <laughs> he's a very nice looking man, but not where I would be like, and she's a beautiful woman, but not where I would be, um, you know, like that's the type of relation I want because I can't deal with anybody that smokes. That's just me. I, I've never liked it since, the smoke, you know, since I was younger. So that's something that I wouldn't be, you know, wouldn't even have been able to deal with. So I think it's, in a sense, be your own relationship goals. Understand who you are as an individual. Work on yourself. Um, and especially if you're in a stage in life where you're both kind of, in a sense, thinking about entrepreneurship. Understand your, I think that that's the biggest stage that we were, we're at, right? Like, taking on different business endeavors. Understand that every call ain't a conference call. So the vision mm -hmm. that you're spouse may have or the person that your partner may have may not be what you see but trust them if that's the vision that's placed inside of them to be able to fulfill it so um i think it's just like i said work on yourself work on you guys relationship and stop looking to the left and the right be your own goals 